All right. Hello. Hello. Let's see if anyone is here. It's weird. It's not giving me like the little counter that it usually gives me that tells me how many people are watching. But I have it pulled up on YouTube so I can see and <laughs> make sure everything's working over there. Okay, there it is. It's coming. It's coming. It's and, a weird day. Yeah. We're live on YouTube. All right. Hello, everyone. I hope this is not confusing for you, but I have the camera on the other side of my body this time, <laughs> um, which is also the side that most of my hair is on. <laughs> So <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> um, I haven't had a haircut in three months, so um, it's it's doing its thing. Okay. All right. Hey, Victoria. Hi, Robin. Thanks for coming back. Hey, Courtney. Jessica. Hello. We, yeah, we had several people waiting before we even went live, so that's oh, cool. Nice. Um, and also over here I don't know can you see that the towel there yeah I can see that mm -hmm. so I had to record some audio some high quality audio and so um on that side of the room is like my bedroom so this is like a small alcove kind of area and so I have a room divider and then I so I spread the room di divider across the opening and then put this big like beach towel on it yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it improves sound baffling. Yeah, it improves the acoustics. So it makes it so it's like essentially a smaller room and then also then three of the walls are covered in cloth. Um and yeah, and I just left it up because I'm lazy. Well, it's a very lovely towel. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it's much more attractive than most of my beach towels. So and I live it's at like the a beach blanket. It's like huge. It's like the size of a blanket. So like oh multiple gosh. people can sit on it nice um but sand clings to it like crazy so i only use it on grass <laughs> it's just the beach blanket gone wrong that is terrible yeah. um all right how's everyone doing tonight what is everyone drinking i have water oh there we go the camera's there this time <laughs> uh that's gonna throw me off <laughs> uh because i subscribe to the literal um, interpretation of Hemingway, Hemingway's advice, which is write drunk, edit sober. And I am revising tonight. Oh, there you go. Cool. Were you revising last time too? Or you were writing, you were writing. I was writing last time. I should have been revising last time, but I was putting it off. <laughs> I don't blame you. Even my writing group is like, do you have to? Cause they want to keep reading the story I'm writing. <laughs> That's a good sign, though, when you're writing, you're yeah. asking for it. My poor writing group, I, we, um, there's several of us, and we're, we are sort of all, well, not me, because I'm not ready to share my stuff yet, but there's three of them all at the same time who are ready to share work, so we're on this round robin of work sharing, and I feel like just mm -hmm. when I finish with one, then we get to the next, so um, I, I feel guilt. I have writing group guilt at the moment. Let's see, Jessica's doing water and hot tea. Robin is doing water because I just opened my package of ginger ale and delivered the wrong thing. Oh, oh no. Man. Um, flavored water. All right. We got a lot of water folks tonight. Hey, Kate. Welcome. I'm glad you made it. Um, I actually invited some people on Facebook today, like, you know, actual sent invites, nice. which I haven't done for a while. So I'm glad that some of y'all showed up. Um, yeah, so everyone, so I'm working on a revision of my what I call my battle bot book, based on uh, an edit letter from my agent. And so tonight, um, I have this weird thing like, where when I'm revising, I need the the goals of my revision written out in succinctly as possible. So I need for each point like three to four words, you know, so I can just look at them at once. Um, and so my, for the first session tonight, what I'm going to be doing is taking the edit letter from my agent and like transposing it into what I needed <laughs> as, are you there? Oh no, did you freeze? Did I freeze? Am I still here everyone?
Oh. I'm checking on the um, YouTube to see because I'll see those comments before I see them in StreamYard. Am I still here? I think I'm still here. Okay, Robin says she can hear me. Cool. Um, so Emily, this happened a little bit earlier. So Emily will probably just join us back in a minute. Um, her internet was having some issues. Uh, water, Larissa is drinking water. Jessica's here. Hey, Jessica. I'm so glad you made it. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know you can hear me, y'all. Um, okay, so Emily's going to join us as soon as she can. Um, I know she was having some internet issues earlier, but let me know in the comments what y'all are working on tonight, what you hope to get done tonight. Um, I said what I'm going to do for the first session. So for the second session or in the third session, I'm basically just going to start on my revision and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> I really hate revising. Emily's back. Yeah, oh, I don't know what is up with my internet today. So if that happens repeatedly, it'll just be like a little entertaining thing that I do. I go away, yeah. I come back, I have a cameo, you know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it, hopefully it will stop happening. I don't know what the deal is. It happens for sure. Yeah, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm frozen or if someone else is frozen. Um, so they're all saying, they're all saying. <laughs> I was frozen. I'm not frozen now. I can see that Emily seems frozen. Yeah. Um, Hopefully I'm not every, frozen now. I asked everybody what they're working on. So what are you working on tonight, Emily? Oh, no. <laughs> That's like the exact same pose that she froze in before. All right, let's see. Robin is working on a new opening scene for your revision. Nice. Courtney is doing background character work. Loris is drafting. Jessica's doing some editing. I think right now Loris is the only one drafting so far. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be revising. I'll wait for a couple more before we get started on our first thing. My dad is doing lawn work outside. So if you hear that, that's what's going on. <laughs> I'm back again. Cool. So what are you working on tonight, Emily? <laughs> I'm working on trying to make my Wi-Fi work. That's what I'm working on. This is going to be my job. Um, so I am working on um, some of the same stuff that I was working on last time, which is the second book in my YA series. And um, I, I don't know if anyone else finds this, but I find a little bit that um, during this crazy time, sometimes my concentration's kind of rocky. So I'm trying to, so I've written like pieces of this, This it's like act two of book two, basically. Mm -hmm. I've written pieces of it and I'm trying to stitch it together. And as I try to stitch it together, I'm like, wait a minute, did I already go over this in the next part? Did I not? Ah! And it's been a while yeah. since I've looked at it too. So. What I'm doing is kind of, I've, I've, I've sort of like stubbornly, like bullheadedly stitched it all together. And now I'm going to look over it and see if it works, which I'm kind of excited about because maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see. But cool. that is what I'm working on and, and um, see what happens. Yeah, I love it when I'm editing and I'm like, oh, I should say this here. That would be really good. And then I realize like four sentences late, sentences later, it's already there. Like, <laughs> Oh, it's such a problem. And like this book in particular, like when I... Um, when I wrote it, I just way overwrote it. I basically wrote a book and a half. And so the, the second half of it ended up becoming like the beginning of book two, right? And so a lot of this stuff I wrote a long time ago. And so now when I go back to it, I'm like, oh, this will be like a nice little filler thing, just what you said. I'm like, he stalked toward the door. And then I like, that'll be my little connector four sentences later. She stalked toward the door. I'm like, oh, for the love yeah. of God. Yeah. I don't know if it's like, I don't know what that says about me. Either I'm consistent <laughs> or I'm completely unoriginal. It's one of those two things, but yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to work on that. Jessica is also drafting. Awesome. And Kate has been on my writing game. I'll be looking at my Nano 19 project. Nice. Cool. So I think it's about time to start our first session. So is everyone ready to write and or edit or whatever you're doing tonight. <laughs> I am ready. And I'm just going to do my little forearm stretch while I wait for those comments to come in. Sorry, I think I might have just hit my mic. 
Oh, yeah. I think um, we're like a little more delayed today than usual. So it might take a little bit longer than usual for comments to come through. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna assume everyone's ready. <laughs> I feel like I've given them enough time to be ready. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put up the timer. And Emily and I are going to mute ourselves. I'm going to put the writing sprint banner happening up. And we're going to start writing in three, two, one, go. All right.
All right, that's time, everyone. 20 minutes is up. Perfect. How'd you do? I did not too badly. I got slightly unstuck. You know when you're writing and you're like, you can't really tell if it's good or if it's not, but you're like, I'm just going to move forward. And at the end, there will hopefully be something in here I can use. That's mm -hmm. where I was. But okay. yeah, about like, I don't know, between four and 500 words somewhere. Not too bad. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I um, finished my list, my short right. list, or right. shortly stated list, I guess, and um, actually got to read the first chapter. But the first chapter didn't require a lot of work, so. Well, it's how do you fit. feel about it? you feel good about the first chapter, or what do you think? Yeah. Um, in fact, like, in the edit letter, my agent kept mentioning how much she loved the first chapter, and um, like some of the things that I need to do are to make the rest of the book more like the first chapter. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. Well, that's exciting. At least, you know, you're starting off in the right place. That's half the time. <laughs> so, cool. All right. looks like people are checking in. Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. I'm glad you made it. Robin got 355 words. Nice. Yeah, I don't even know how many words. I did add like two sentences, but it's a lot. Let's see. Anyone else? But I'm editing in Word now, so I don't have like the little Scrivener word count tracker. <laughs> so do you like you like Scrivener then? I've never used it, but I've heard good things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I draft in it. And sometimes I do like big picture edits in it as well, because the corkboard function makes it good for that. Mm -hmm. Um I don't I think I'm mainly editing in Word right now so I can do the track changes when I send oh, it back yeah. to her, just so she can tell what, what I've changed. Um, Jessica finished chapter four. She's editing chapter four. Nice. Sweet. Tamara still managed to edit a page in only 10 minutes. Tamara joined us a little late. Um, you're doing CP work. Oh, okay. And Kayla got 220. 222 words, writing in between calls at work. Oh. Good for you. Trooper. Uh, Jennifer, oops, Jennifer is researching, but no real words, but found lots of cool stuff. Cool. Jennifer, you're working on a blog blog post again. And Jessica got 388 words. Nice. We got a lot of, like, double numbers. 355, 222, 388. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> you were right there. It's funny. Larissa is not sure how many words, um, but she was merging a scene from an old draft into this one. Oh, okay, cool. All nice. Well, it sounds at least like everyone got a lot done, which, I, you know, this, this is so great for me too, because it forces me to sit down and focus. It doesn't let me sort of escape in the way that I sometimes uh -huh. will do. Like, oh, what's going on over here? Oh, I should fold that laundry. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's really great to see what everyone's working on too. Yeah. I'm like, people are watching me. Like I can't <laughs> mess around. I can't goof off. Um, yeah, like I don't, even have, accountable. I don't even have Twitter open. So <laughs> good job. Um, oh, Jennifer's not always, always working on blog posts. Uh, so the last couple of days I've been working on um, I had a goal on my Pub Talk Live Patreon, um, where if I got a certain number of um, supporters, that uh, I would syndicate the um, the show into a podcast. So it's a live show, um, but then I t I can take the audio from it and put it on a podcast so people can listen to it if they're not able to watch it. And I hit that this weekend. Nice. And so I've that's what I've been doing the past couple of days is is preparing all of that. And it is technically up as a podcast on many um, locations now. So you can see there are four episodes up now and there's going to be a new one added every um, day until all the previous episodes are up. Wow, that's yeah. a big undertaking. Good for you. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's like 15 episodes. Um, and it, it, they don't require a lot of editing because I'm not doing like active editing on them like you would on a podcast mm -hmm. um, because it's a live show and it's just, you know, it's just basically the audio from the show. But there were two episodes where I had like connection issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to edit. 
Yeah, I had to edit several minutes from those. One I had to edit seven minutes from. I'm like, oh, this was so awkward. Um, Jennifer said, I'm trying to be better about consistency with the new blog. Victoria, I'm working on finishing the outline for my book. Then after today, on to writing. Oh, yeah, you're working on the outline. Cool. Nice. Oh, thanks, y'all. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And that's what I was doing the recording for was I was recording the like intros and outros for that. And so every episode I say this, this episode was originally broadcast on date, you know, and yeah. So I wanted those to be as good as possible. <laughs> Are you a big podcast person? I listen to them, especially when I cook. Um, well, like, so I moved into my parents' house and I used to have a Google home in my kitchen. And so I would just have the Google home play podcast while I cook. And I don't have that here. Um, and so I listen to them on my phone, but when my parents are there and they're watching something, then I have to listen to them on headphones. So I don't do it as much as I did before. I but love what, my podcasts. I, I'll, I'll yeah. listen to them like when I'm going for like a walk on my street mm -hmm. or I'll, I'd listen to them when I cook too, which speaking of cooking, I was amazed at our um, similar French silk pie construction. <laughs> yeah. So y'all, we, we um, both found ourselves, I believe on Mother's Day, making mm -hmm. French silk pies, which was, uh, it's kind of funny because I think we both found our recipes online. We tried two different recipes. I don't yeah. know, so you were, you were happy with yours, but not the crust, right? Was that it? Yeah, well, it's, the the problem with the crust wasn't the recipe it was something there was some kind of taste to it that was like definitely not not normal i mean it just had blutter uh, it just had blutter what am i saying <laughs> it just had butter flour and sugar in it um and it just tasted off so like i think th and water too you know um, and so I think something got into one of those ingredients that wasn't right. Or, um, I, I did use my mom's like rolling mat to roll out the dough. And then she tells me afterwards that she hasn't used it in like nine years. So like, who knows what was on that? Um, yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't the recipe. It was, it was something like mysterious <laughs> ingredient. Uh, I I'm glad the pie turned out well. Um, I only had chocolate chips, which I know you're really not supposed to mm, use to make yeah. it. So, so I had no, to no. do that. Big no-no. And I had to use those. And then, like, it was sort of like a lighter color than I wanted it to be. Like, my, many French silk pies are kind of really dark. So, I don't know. Did yours turn out like a dark chocolate appearance? Or did it look more milk chocolatey? Well, the thing was, when I bought the chocolate, um, they didn't have any semi-sweet or even bitter baking chocolate. Mm -hmm. The only thing they had was the German sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I was worried about it being too sweet. But also, like, my mom really doesn't like dark chocolate. And both my parents like really sweet things. So I was like, oh, whatever. We'll see. And I do think it was, like, a little too sweet. Um, but that's just because I couldn't find any, oh, like, baking supplies are, like, rated right now. So It's crazy. Particularly yeast. No yeast for anybody. <laughs> I, luckily, I do have, like, a pretty big jar of yeast. Um, you know, like one of the jar ones, but, um, so what, what podcast do you listen to then? Um, so I listen to a lot of different podcasts. I listen to, um, Dear Hank and John, which I love. Mm -hmm. Um, I listen to, um, Family Secrets, um, which is a podcast that is just about exactly what it sounds like. I'm pulling up my little podcast list so I can look at them right now and tell you, um, The Moth. I love The Moth. I listen to This American Life as a podcast. Mm. I listen to Pottercast for a really long time. <laughs> um, and, um, but you know, they only update like ever so regularly now. Um, and then like other other podcasts kind of come and go. It depends on like, sometimes I listen to Serial. Um, mm. A lot of podcasts that I, I listen to tend to have somehow come from, um, like they're also on NPR as shows, uh, like The Moth or This American Life or Serial. Um, but yeah, I just, I love them. And I feel like it's it's so bite-sized that it's it's really great. And it's, sometimes I'll listen to ones that are specifically about writing, you know, um, mm -hmm. like um, Literati Cast or whatever, whatever it might be. Or sometimes I'll listen to ones about book marketing or, you know, sometimes I just want to listen to ones that are just like going to make me happy or be about cooking or, so I really, um, 
I just love my ability to be able to listen to podcasts and sort of bite-sized chunks as compared to like when I listen to audiobooks, which I also love, uh, you know, I love audiobooks, but you know, I'm, I'm so bad about audiobooks. And it's actually like, if I get excited about an audiobook, like instead of having a driveway moment, like I'll have a shower moment. Like I'm going to listen to the audiobook when I'm in the shower and then I splash my phone. I'm like, Oh, there goes my iPhone, but it's totally worth it. So <laughs> yeah, sort of like fulfilling the wish that I had when I was little, that somebody would make a book that I could read in the shower. So mm. now I have my, my audiobooks, my podcast. I, um, I had, uh, this like specifically shower Bluetooth speaker for a while. Mm -hmm. Like I got it, I didn't buy it. I got it like as part of a package and, um, I tried listening to it once, but like, I just couldn't hear it very well. And yeah. it was like frustrating to me. And so I never used it again and I ended up giving it away. That is um, sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like you and Jennifer have, um, Similar interest in podcasts. Victoria oh, said yeah. a lot of true crime. Yeah, I'm looking over here. I miss Pottercast too. And Dear Hank and John also makes my heart happy. <laughs> yes. It does. Um, oh, Ask the Bards. Okay. Yeah, I haven't listened to Ask the Bards yet. I um, but I plan to. I love most of the stories Mike Bennett reads on podcasts. Huh, I don't know that one. I, I love finding new podcasts. I love it. Yeah, I listen to. Um, Print Run, which is um, Eric Kane and Laura Zatz, and they talk about the publishing industry, like as a whole, like as a business. And um, I like getting their takes on on that kind of stuff. Um, and then I, I have I added Literati Cast to mine. I don't know a couple weeks ago, but I actually haven't listened to an episode yet. Um, and then my friend has one. Uh, daily dose with nick and bob and it's literally just them two talking for like five minutes at a time like they post like five minute snippets every day um and i mean i i like it but like i'm friends with nick i don't know if it would be interesting to people who don't i feel uh, like sometimes sometimes like the more like dear hank and john is like this the more that you listen to it even if like you don't really know the jokes or don't really know what they're talking about. The more you listen to it, the more you kind of get sucked into their world, you know, and yeah. there's, there's just something I think that's really exciting about dropping into, particularly as a writer, dropping into somebody else's world and just hearing where they are at that moment on that day. And particularly if you listen to a podcast for a long enough period of time, if it's consistently, you know, two people talking or one person's point of view, you kind of, I don't know, you're like yeah. invited into their living room a little bit. Yeah. Um, I listened to Blacklight, which is by Ryan Douglas, and he talks about Black queer representation in literature. Um, and Deadline City, which is Rita Cordova and Danielle Clayton, they talk about publishing. Um, Hidden Brain, which is like a sociology thing. I know that one. That one I, I think has been that. mentioned in a bunch of my stuff. Maybe uh, in Serial or somewhere, maybe Family Ghost, somewhere I've heard about that one. Yeah, it's an NPR podcast, so it's probably, yeah. Um, and then I actually listen to Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier, um, but he, for the last couple of months, has not been doing the normal stuff that he does for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. It's time for us to start, but uh, I was like having so much fun talking about podcasts. <laughs> I love talking about podcasts. Oh, wait, wait, wait. New thing about Twilight. See that one? Oh, you got it up now. Oh, hot and bothered about romance novels. Huh. Interesting. They're doing funny chapter by chapter podcasts of Twilight. Twilight and quarantine. Okay. That would crack me up. Interesting. I'll have to tell Brighton Walsh about that one. <laughs> All right. So we're going to um, pull up the timer again and... Uh, oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's what I used to use when it was just me on this. Oh, by the way, May 27th, I don't have a co-host yet. So if anybody watching wants to co-host, let me know. Um, and we're going to get started. So uh, ready, set, go. I, we talked for like five minutes longer than planned. Go. <laughs>
All right, time is up for that one. How did everyone do? Oops, there we go. Not not too bad, not too bad. It's um, it's one of those times for sure where I'm like, must focus, must focus. So it's really good to keep you focused. I, I didn't do a word count that time. It's probably around the same, maybe around 400-ish. Nice. I um, <laughs> so one of the things that I have to do is to um, make one of my characters' goals more specific. And the way that I'm doing that is, um, I'm so she's into robotics, and so um, one of the things I need to do is uh, have her want to participate in a specific robotics program in college. And so I literally just spent that entire 20 minutes trying to decide which robotics program she's going to want to go to. Isn't it random, like, all the knowledge that you come up with when you write books? Like, you yeah. yourself might not ever want to go to a robotics program, but now you're going to know about, like, the five top robotics programs in the country. Yeah. Well, it's like, I know Carnegie Mellon is the top robotics program in the country. Like, I've, I'm, anyone who's ever looked at a robot, like, knows that. Um, but... I don't know if that is the right goal for my character. Um, so that's kind of what I was like <laughs> looking back and forth. Hey, Ebony, 213 words. Nice. Even late. That's good. 307, but I got hungry, so I made ramen. <laughs> okay. Nice. I have um, some more stew that I'm going to eat later. Um, I didn't have time to eat before, so I just ate the rest of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> Yum, love the pie. Um, Joanna gets 235, Zorisa 385, BC Brown joined us in that last sprint, 657, nice. 233, nice. Jennifer says, hi, Ebony. Oh, uh, DK is in love with the painting on your wall. Oh, let's see if I can lift this up so you can see the rest yeah. of it. Of course not. Why would life work that way? Oh, can you kind of oh, see Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Um, Ages and ages ago, actually, the artist was just a high school student um, that, that was really talented. And ages and ages ago, um, I commissioned her to do a book cover for a little indie press. Um, mm. And um, she had other work, and I just fell in love with that piece. And so I was like, can I buy that from you? And uh, she wanted cool. to be an accountant. She didn't want to be an artist. She was going to college to be an accountant. So I'm like, well, I hope you keep painting, too. But um, I don't know if she still is. But I, I've, I've had that piece for like 20 years. I've taken it from like apartment to house to everywhere. Wow. Jessica also got distracted with research. <laughs> Jessica sounds more interesting than mine. <laughs> Owls as pets, huh? I did not know that. I'm sure, I guess. Why not? Um, finally remember what, what I was actually writing about in November. <laughs> okay. Progress. Kaylee got stuck on a call at work, but it was nice watching everyone else be productive. Aw. Laura said it was really good pie. It was French silk. I don't know if you hit, miss, uh, saw the first part of that conversation. You know, I never got to actually have a piece of the pie because we made the pie for my housemate's mom who's in assisted living and he had oh. a present for her and the present didn't come in time. And he just felt awful because he was like, I'm not gonna have anything for my mom for Mother's Day. I was like, hold mm -hmm. up. I have everything to make a French soap pie and I've never made one. Let's do it. <laughs> so I made it, but we didn't actually get to try it. So I'm like dying mm. to know how it was. Hopefully she'll say it was good. I don't know. <laughs> Tamara read through two chapters. Owls are creepy to me. They are a little creepy to me too, but they're like, what is the movie where they like, what was it? They used owls to implant people with alien personalities or something. I don't know. I don't watch scary movies. I, so like. I have not seen that. It does sound scary. It was scary, but I like, I watched like, literally 30 seconds of it so um i don't really remember <laughs> owls and alien personalities i have to look that one up it sounds like a dream i would have i know now i'm like did i make that up um no no because i've talked with my brother-in-law about it so i know it's real okay i'm um, gonna look this up i'm now very curious <laughs> we're gonna find out hold on owls alien personality would that be the best thing to look up movie no i it's i think it's 
might be like a body snatcher type of the fourth kind. Is that possible? Yes. That's it. Okay. Hold on. Let me wiki that. What is that about? Um, the fourth, this is Wikipedia, so like, yeah. take it for what it's worth. The fourth kind is a 2009 American science fiction psychological thriller film. God, that's a mouthful. Um, featuring a cast, blah, 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 derived from J. Allen Hynek's classification of close encounters with aliens, which the fourth kind denotes alien abduction. Is that like when we, okay, hold on. Wait. Ah, where's the plot? A pseudo documentary purporting to be based on real events occurring in Nome, Alaska, in which psychologist Dr. Abigail Emily Abby Tyler. Of I don't see owls. Uses hypnosis to uncover memories from her patients of alien abduction, but there's no owls. There's a, a thriller involving, this is the IMDb, an ongoing unsolved mystery in Alaska where one town has seen an extraordinary number of unexplained disappearances during the past 40 years, and there are accusations of a federal cover up. Yeah, it's like the owl, it's like a small part of it, I think. This where, is a large black triangular object flying over the Tyler house. Maybe that's the owl. Who knows? The owls show up like whenever they're being taken. Huh. Yeah, because you see one of the, um, here, I'm going to share my screen because this is very important. Everyone needs to know right now. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen so I can show you um, one of the movie posters has an owl on it. Huh. Ooh, oh. Can you see it? Oh, yes, I can see yeah. it. How pleasant. Yeah. Huh. Hi, so, owl. And then it says it's not an owl. Figure that huh. out, yeah. Creepy, all right, learn something. That's wow. like, a, what's that Stephen King book? Oh, is it The Dark Half? It's where like, he's a, he's a writer and then like his, um, is he's got like a it wasn't really a twin but like part of his body that i don't know whatever anyway i swear there's like sparrows that are psychopomps that show up or something whenever his twin is present uh, you know, creepy creepy birds birds are creepy i think in general so um <laughs> Vic victoria said a french shell pie would go red wine are you trying i'm um, look right drunk <laughs> edits over victoria that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> I'm trying to do the second part the first part is easy Marissa went to Whole Foods to try to get gluten-free pie the other day, and they didn't have any. Oh, sadness. Oh, gosh. Apparently, aliens look like owls or pretend to be owls before they abduct them. There you go. There you go. They did look owly in that poster, like alien-y oh. and owly at the same time, the poster you should. <laughs> Leora is here. All no. right. Um, we have one more 20 minute sprint to go. Is there anything anybody wants to talk about before we start our last sprint? It's gotten like darker and darker in here as the sun has set. Yeah, it's I hope still an owl doesn't show up at my window. Yeah, I hope not too. You, can, you guys can see out my window, I think, just like a little yeah. fragment of it. It's still light enough here. We'll warn you if there's an owl. If there's an owl, I'll duck. Hopefully, it won't be like a creepy owl that can go from your screen into my screen. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> oh. oh no, that's scary. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna close my curtain all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no owls allowed. Yeah. Okay. I have a cat. Hopefully, an owl won't come to my window. Oh yeah, that would be bad. Um, I think indoor plants are creepy. <laughs> that's funny, Ebony. That's hilarious. <laughs> I guess it depends on the plant. Um, I can't have any indoor plants because, again, I have a cat, and she likes to knock them over. Not nice. Yeah. So, no plants for me. She also likes to chew on their leaves. Yeah. I'm always worried that I won't know, like, which plants are toxic or non-toxic, mm -hmm. and then my cat will come along. She, and, like, when I was growing up, we didn't have a cat, but we did have, a, we had, a like, a creepy staircase with stained glass windows, and... First, and there was a landing and on um, these dark, dark, dark wooden stairs. And then the wallpaper was silver and white reflective deers, which is really weird if you think about it. I don't know why someone reflected deer, but there they were. 
And in the corner of this landing was a gigantic fake plant. And so, Ebony, I kind of understand why you would be so freaked out by the plants. Because when I was little, this plant was like eight feet tall. It was like a fake rubber tree or something. And it was hideous and dusty. And like the, the stained glass, like the light would come through the stained glass and it would shine creepily on this plant. And like every time I would have to creep past it at night up to my bedroom when I was little, I was afraid it was going to come to life and get me. So I can understand your feelings, Ebony. I share them. Oh, goodness. Um, all right. I was just trying to turn my volume up and my computer's trying to protect my hearing. It's like, do you, are you sure you want to go above 35%? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Well, I do remember when we were little, we had a fake plant and we had to like dust it. Like it was part of our dusting rotation. I was like, what is the point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. We're going to start another 20 minute sprint. And I'm just going to pick a college and go with it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. I, I looked at, uh, uh, like, I was looking at top robotics programs, and one of them is the, the Ohio State University. And I went to University of Florida. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, not that one. <laughs> Can't work. Can't work. You need a different one. You need a different one. All right. You had a grapefruit tree in your kitchen? Kind of cool. OK. Huh. Did it actually make grapefruits? I don't know. <laughs> I think, She's like, this is torture. What what book was it that I was reading? Where man, I can't remember now. But there's like um like wealthy oh, it was uh Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. They had like in one of the the castles, small castles, um, an orange room, orange tree room, oh. where so it's like the climate doesn't support orange trees. So like wealthy people, it was fashionable for a while to have like basically an indoor greenhouse in your castle um, to grow orange trees. Kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I have an, I have various fruit trees and fruit plants in my yard that I'm convinced I'm going to kill. I don't really know much about them. So I keep trying desperately to like actually make them grow. And I'm like, now I have like little tiny apples, little tiny blueberries, little tiny blackberries, and a little tiny peaches. Mm. We'll see if any of them actually become things I can eat or if they just are all stolen by the birds, the bad birds. See, we're back at birds again. Here we are. My mom said for blueberry plants, you have to wait until the second year to eat them. Yeah, this is year two of the blueberries oh, okay. for me. Right. And then I just planted the peach tree. And so um, my friend said that she says um, normally the shock of transplanting the peach tree will make the fruit fall off, which is a sad mm -hmm. thought because they're so cute and fuzzy right now. I don't know. And the blackberries, those are pretty new. So I don't know if they're actually going to give me blackberries, my little blackberry bushes. But we'll find out. It could happen. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> so funny. Says, my mom gets a fruit season. It does give grapefruits now. Oh wow! I mean, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, my sister posted this meme the other day. So I live in Florida, right? And it's like, it's one of those memes. It's like absolutely no one, and it's like Floridian. This all used to be orange groves. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> All right, let's start 20 minutes. We've been like chatting more than usual today. I think it's just that kind of day. Must be. All right, pull up the timer. Let me get the right layout this time. All right, cool. And I'm going to put up the little ticker. Nice. And ready? Ready. Set. Go.
All right, that is time, everyone. How did y'all do? Oh, you're muted, Emily. Yeah, I unmuted me. Yeah, I unmuted. <laughs> yeah, how did Are you that? do? How did, did you pick a college? I did pick a college, and then I spent the first couple of minutes um, kind of looking at their summer programs and stuff to see if that would fit in to what I was trying to do. But I actually, I got through another chapter, and I added a few... Um, I'm trying to do a couple of things right now, so I added a few sentences here and there to, to uh, you know, <laughs> it's like a slow going process to like oh, yeah. weave in everything. Cause it's not like thing, it's not like the kind of revision where I'm like deleting scenes and writing new scenes. It's more like weaving smaller things in throughout everything. Yeah. Well, so. it's good that you have your little like three or four word outline to keep you on track. Your little stories. <laughs> Like, so I, 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 like for me, sometimes I just get like lost in the sauce with my revisions. I'm like, oh, wait, what was I supposed to be doing again? What was wrong with this? Did I fix it? Did I make it worse? Oh, what did yeah. I do? Oh, gosh, I'm yawning. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I was scared Kate when I came back. Um, 7.48 for BC Brown. Very nice. Uh, my video is copied off my phone and designed some graphics for my video. Cool. Very cool. Is that a YouTube video, Lori, L Leora? <laughs> How many did you start with, Jen? Is the real question. <laughs> um, Jessica changed a bunch in her scene. Robin wrote 200 more words. Um, I did some research to fill in the stuff I left blank. Nice. Same as last time. Ebony got 289 for a total of 502 tonight. Nice. Mm -hmm. 266. But I wrote a bunch and deleted a bunch. <laughs> yeah. And uh -huh. so it goes. Makes sense. How'd you nice. do? Oh, pretty good. I um I didn't count the number of words, but I was trying to get to like a crucial break in the scene and I got there. So that's good. Jennifer, I don't think knows how many times she started. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Larissa got 375 and Laura, yep, next video for my author too. Nice. I stumbled over it first, but I got it. Um, BC Brown, thank you so much. And yeah, if you could hit the like button down there and also if you could subscribe to my channel, really appreciate it. Um, I do these write-ins and I also do, um, my twice a month publishing talk show on Saturday nights and... Um, I may have some more stuff coming up too, so keep an eye out and subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, well, I think that's it for the night. Anything you want to talk about, Emily, before we... No, I'm good. Thanks for yeah. having me. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for coming back. <laughs> An owl-free zone. No owls. Oh, <laughs> it's true. Oh, Kaylee said, not many words, but my main character is up to some mischievous things. Nice. I love uh, mischief in Who books, not? not in real life, but in books. It's great. <laughs> thank you, Kate. And thank all of you for joining us tonight. Um, I get more work done, I think, in these write-ins than I do like the rest of the week combined. So um, thank you so much for coming and, and continuing to show up and working with us and chatting with us and doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye.